Hey guys, I'm back with another review video and this one I'm pretty excited about. Now, if you've seen the channel before, you know I've got uh, several Champion generators and I'm gonna go over at first, why did I get this particular unit? Uh, what do I plan to use it for? Some features, some specs, and we'll talk a little about uh, its use. So this is the brand new Champion 100 593 battery powered inverter generator. So this thing's pretty cool. This is totally battery powered, no combustion engine at all. It strictly runs off of lithium ion batteries. So uh, real quick, why did I get this? Why do, why do I need it if I got a bunch of gas generators? Well, twofold. First of all, what had me thinking about it is uh, a place that we like to bring our camper to recently uh, won't allow any combustion generators. So they want it to be completely quiet. So even if you have an onboard inverter generator or something, can't use it, no gas powered generators. So if we wanna have some extra power there, we obviously need a pretty significant power station when we go camping. Um, also, power went out at the house and I happened to be away and I was trying to walk my wife through how to set up the, the big generator and you know, things you don't think about, right? You didn't have power, so we couldn't get it out of the garage because the garage door wouldn't open. And then she saw the big electrical cord, didn't feel comfortable trying to set that up. So how could we have something to like run the fridges and things if we needed to do that? And this is the perfect solution because you can use this indoors. Uh, no problem at all. All right, so first of all, packaging. Packaged awesome. Uh, both of these uh, packages are the double walled cardboard. So, I mean, this is stout. It's packed in foam. It's got plastic wrap. Again, the double box. This thing's gonna arrive in, in good shape. So, looking at the unit itself. Again, it's the model 10593 and it can supply up to 1600 watts of continuous power or 3200 like starting watts. So say you've got a refrigerator or something with a compressor that takes a, a bit of energy to get it kicked on. Uh, this guy's gonna be able to supply 3,200 to get it started for about four seconds. And it can go a little over 4,000 for like a, a quick surge if you really had a surge. Uh, but then it's gotta ramp itself down and get to that 1,600. So uh, looking over the unit on the top, Integrated heavy duty handles. This thing is, uh, it's heavy. It weighs, I think just over 60 pounds. So, but as with any generator, I mean, they, they're they they're heavy. I mean, you're not gonna put this thing on your backpack and bring it into the woods with you, but certainly this can go in a cart or, uh, you know, anywhere you need to get it. So looking at the side of the unit here, it's just got some um, cooling fans, uh, some ports on the side to keep everything cool. Uh, if we look at the back of the unit here, we've got some cool features. So this is the wall charger. It's a standard, uh, reminds me of like the old school uh, radio players. Um, pretty standard uh, outlet here. These oftentimes go into power bricks and things like that. So you're gonna plug in to the wall here. Another cool feature is it's got the um, connectors here for solar. So 10 to 28 volts of solar, and it, you can put more than 440 some watts to it because as anybody knows with solar, it's all about efficiency. So, you know, you, you might have to have 600 watts of panels in order to get a little over 400 watts uh, of charging power, but it comes with a big uh, heavy duty cord here, which is gonna plug into the back. And then you get the solar connections. Or actually, these are the MC4 uh, solar connections here, just your standard um, solar style connector. And then each one of these guys plugs in right here. So you could have three different panels or you could only run one panel if that's all you have, not a problem, just leave the others blank. So what's cool about this is what you could do, uh, you could plug this in uh, to a wall outlet and get it charged up. I think it's about six hours or so or overnight to get it fully charged. Uh, but you can get it charged up to a, you know, plenty good to use 80, 90% in maybe six hours uh, right here. But you can also double that. And if you had access to solar, you can put that guy right here and charge with your solar. So you could actually do both and, and significantly shorten the charging time. There's also an expansion pack terminal in the back here. So you can add battery modules to this, which is super cool. So you can, you know, basically double the capacity of it by adding some battery modules and you can add up to 10 modules. So what I like about this is, you know, I've got some other batteries and I had looked at building my own 
uh, complete pack setup, right? Like getting individual cells and putting my own inverter and my old charge controller and doing all that. And it starts getting pretty daunting when you're talking about, you know, all wiring up, you know, six, eight, 10, 12 batteries in series and, and uh, you know, making your own power station when the cool thing about this is it's ready to go for you. Um, I mean, everything you need is right here. So uh, let's try and do this one handed here, sorry. So let's get to the front. This is where everything is. So probably what you're all interested in. So uh, it's got a nice smoke covered panel here. When we press that, it gets our panel up and out of the way. And then what we have here, the APP, the Anderson power pole. So this is a 12 volt only connection, 12 volt at up to 20 amps. So what are you gonna use this for? Well, if you've got a, a CB radio, a ham radio, shortwave radio, you wanna charge a battery, something like that, you could have 12 volts up to 20 amps plugged in right here. So that's, that's a pretty cool feature. Um, right here, you've got a 12 volt, 10 amp cigarette style barrel plug. So this is a regulated uh, output on this. Just another nice feature to have. Over here, you've got USB, type A, five volts, 2.1 amp output on these guys. So charging, you know, headlamps, uh, certain cell phones, things that aren't very high current, high draw type, this will be great for that. You've got a Qualcomm, uh, what is it? Five to nine volts on this guy. And then right here, your USB-C power delivery. Uh, up to 60 watts. So this will deliver anywhere from five up to 20 volts. So you can charge a laptop, you could charge, you know, brand new uh, fancy cell phones, anything that runs off of USB-C up to 20 volts right here. So that's a super nice feature to have, especially in the long outage. You gotta be able to fast charge your phone and uh, do things like that. So that's this side. Um, it is a floating neutral generator. So if you're going to have this in a more permanent situation and you want to have this grounded, certainly contact your electrician. Um, but it's nice to have that there. Um, over here, we have our 120, 110 volt side. So you have three separate 120 outlets here. One, two, and three. Now, this will go up to 15 amps. So you've got a breaker here if you need to reset the breaker, but it's not 15, 15 and 15 amps. Okay. It's, it's 15 amps shared up to 1600 running Watts. So keep that in mind. These are tamper resistant grounded plugs. So the TR just tamper resistant kind of helps keep the kids from sticking stuff in there or whatever. Uh, just a little extra nice safety measure. If you're familiar with any Champion products, especially their generators, they've got a Paralink for this as well. So you could take your Paralink cable and then you'd have a unit up here and then another, basically one of these guys on top of that. So you'd link two of them together. Then you'd have a 30 amp outlet for your camper or basically anything that you're on run 30 amps for. So that's super cool that that's there as an option to expand this even further. So, uh, what can this unit do? Well, let's turn it on. So to turn it on, just press and hold the power button here for about three seconds, and you can hear the unit turn on there. And this has a really cool uh, LCD display. It's pleasant to look at. Um, it's easy to read from any angle. Try to be quiet there for a second. You just hear a little fan turn on. A little cooling fan. Anytime you have an inverter, there's going to be fan. There's going to be a little electronic noises, but I'm talking at just a normal volume. So if you can hear that, you, you can see how quiet it is. So when we look at the display, we can see we've got battery one. And if I had an expansion battery or a second unit, that would light up here as battery two. We can see that I'm 100% charge and our 12 volt outlets for USB over here are active. Now I haven't turned on the 120 volt outlets yet. The reason for that is I'm not using it. And if you're not gonna be using those right away, there's no sense in having them on because any inverter will draw a little bit of power just simply maintaining its inversion status and making that power. So if you don't necessarily need those on, maybe you're just charging some 12 volt products, no sense in doing that. Super easy to turn them on. Press and hold the power button for about a second and then let it go. We see our a little flash there and now we know that our outlets are live. T 
THD shield. So because this is an inverter, uh, it has very clean sine wave output power. So what does that mean? If you're charging electronics, especially like laptops or other sensitive things, uh, the, something with a low total harmonic distortion just means that that sine wave, the waveform of the electricity, it's very clean. It's not, uh, it, if you looked at it through an oscilloscope, you wouldn't see a bunch of chatter and, and wiggly, wavy lines um, that's sort of noise. Think of like a, a construction site generator where you're running chop saws and table saws. It really doesn't matter if you have that super clean power because those things don't really care. But if you were trying to listen to this through like a home theater system or something that would be susceptible to noise that you might hear through a speaker, it's just nice to have that. That THD shield will run until your battery capacity, which is right here, hits below 30%. Then that will shut off just as a way to help save the battery a little bit. You can also turn that off if for some reason you don't think you need it. Uh, up at the top here, you have a circuit overload reset or your THD shield um, on off. And then this is a little light bar here. So just press your button here and your light bar turns on. That's pretty cool. So you've got a low setting and a high setting. So while this isn't going to, you know, light up the front of your ATV or something too well, um, if I had to work on a project right here, I mean, there's a lot of light coming off this thing. This would be really handy. It, it'd help me be able to see what I need to here, um, you know, look at my device. So I just like that that's there. That's a pretty cool feature to have. All right, moving along, what can this thing do? Well, I've got kind of the standard test here, okay? Let me put you guys on the, the mount, and then let's grab uh, the 1500 watt heater here. So, just to show you that I'm not pulling your chain at all, let's get the kilowatt meter. I'm gonna get the kilowatt meter going. Oops. And we're gonna turn our heater on high. So we're at 111, 112 volts and 1300 watts. Okay, so if we have a 1600 watt generator, we should be able to run that, right? Well, let's plug it in and make sure. So she's on, she's running, and what can we see on our display? Okay, 1.7, that means we have about 1.7 hours. We're drawing, this thing is saying about 1500 watts and we're at 119 volts, okay, at 12.6 amps. What I have found is that this display, uh, 1.7 hours is our total run time that we would have running this as it is with this much draw. What I have found is that at least with respect to my kilowatt meter, this reads just a touch higher than what my kilowatt meter reads. Not a big deal, just something to be aware of. I do like that it has the gauge um, on there just to give you an idea of based on your current load, if nothing changes, how much time can I run like this? So that's that's good to know. Now, would I recommend running a 1500 watt heater on this continuously? No, but if you had to in a pinch, absolutely. You know, warm up the room a bit or, or whatever you need to do. So uh, in a moment here, we'll see that display adjust and you can see it's already you know, recalculating everything. We're not taking any other power. Um, what I have here on this big cord is I have a 19 cubic foot commercial freezer. Now, freezers or anything with a compressor draws a lot of power when it first starts up. So let's see if this can run and take the handle that startup power. So freezer just kicked on. And we can get about, wow, almost four hours. 912 watts currently. 7.4 amps running. Yeah, super cool. So, I mean, this thing didn't even flinch. And I don't know if you guys can hear this. There, there's just a tiny cooling fan sound. And what, what I'm trying to do is let's get this thing running here a little bit and see if we can get that cooling fan to ramp up so you guys can sort of hear what that sounds like. Now, is this thing 100% quiet? No but it is no louder than a conversation at most. It, what it would sound like is a small fan running or something. I mean, you could have this in your living room of the house and during a power outage or something, it's just gonna be 
awesome. And really that's why I got it. Um, it between that and then us being able to use this uh, for the camper, especially when we go uh, to our off-grid spot, which doesn't allow, as I said earlier, the uh, gasoline generators, this thing's gonna be awesome for that. So I'm super excited uh, that this is gonna be able to do that. You can see that the screen shut off here. That's just a power saving thing. Um, if you just press the button there, you can come and see exactly what you got um, you know, for time left and, and whatnot. So. I think this is a great unit. Uh, I haven't, of course, since I've got this, it's it's winter here in Minnesota, so we, we haven't been out camping yet. I haven't been able to um, hook that up to the camper, but uh, I'm, I know that this is gonna work awesome for that. And the best thing about this is I just leave this in the garage and I know that if we have another power outage and my wife just wants to plug in the fridge and freezer to keep that thing running, I mean, it's gonna work awesome for that. She can do that. It's as simple as plug in, you know, press the power button, plug it in and you're off to the races. So if you guys have any questions or comments on this, uh, put them in the comments below. I'll try to answer them for you. Uh, Champion's been a, a good company. I've got a lot of their stuff. I just, I think they make a good quality thing. I believe their customer service line now is open 24 hours. So if you have a question, give them a call and there's usually somebody there that can help you in pretty short order. So I've just been happy with that. I'll throw a link in the comments to where I purchased this, give you a couple options for that. And I'll be sure to report back if uh, I come up with any tips or tricks regarding this new unit or um, if I run into any issues. So. Thanks guys, appreciate you watching. Uh, if you haven't done so, give this a thumbs up if you could, leave a comment below, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.